Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, November 16th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. The State of Illinois Environmental Protection Agency has announced a new $20 million funding opportunity to expand public charging stations across the state, building on the governor's Rebuild Illinois Capital Plan and the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act. Acting Illinois EPA Director James Jennings revealed the notice of funding opportunity last week, aimed at supporting the purchase and installation of new DC fast charging and level two chargers at publicly accessible locations. Applications will be accepted on a first-come, first-served basis starting on November 17th. Eligible applicants, including businesses and site owners, must meet minimum scoring criteria based on project readiness, locations in underserved counties, distance from existing chargers, and placements at public transit park and ride facilities. Extra points are available for projects in equity investment eligible communities. For DC fast chargers, applications must propose at least two locations, with funding for up to eight ports per site. There is no limit on level two ports. This funding is not related to the Federal National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure, or NEVI, program focused on interstate corridors. In 2024, NEVI awards totaled $25.3 million and 37 station locations. This year, another $18.4 million and 25 stations were approved. The initiative supports the state of Illinois' goal of 1 million EVs on the road by 2030. As of March of this year, the state has over 130,000 registered on the road. More charging options are finally available for Volkswagen EV owners. After nearly a year of technical delays, the company announced that owners of its ID4 and ID Buzz will be able to charge on over 25,000 Tesla supercharger stalls starting November 18th. To enable interoperability, owners must purchase a Volkswagen approved Next to CCS adapter for $200, available at dealerships or VW's online parts site. Original owners of 2025 model Model year ID4 and ID Buzz vehicles may qualify for a $100 rebate on the adapter. Starting with 2026 models, the adapter will be included as standard, and future EVs will feature native NAX ports. For now, VW owners will need to use the Tesla app to initiate sessions. Certain 2024 and 2025 models will receive over-the-air software updates for optimized charging performance. As always, non-Tesla vehicles can use a subset of the entire supercharger network. I'll link the interactive map below showing which stations support non-Tesla EVs. BMW is the lone remaining automaker awaiting access to the network. Of course, we'll share that development when it becomes available. While we're on the topic of supercharging, Google Maps has provided an update to their system, which includes real-time stall availability information and power ratings for Tesla supercharging stations. This is a helpful addition to those who drive non-Tesla NAX-compatible EVs. It's especially seamless for those who have built-in Google operating systems or drivers who rely on Android Auto functionality. According to Bloomberg, Apple customers may be receiving CarPlay support in Tesla vehicles soon, but at the time of publishing, neither Tesla nor Apple has confirmed this. According to a McKinsey study conducted in 2024, 30% of auto buyers polled said the unavailability of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto would be a deal breaker. Do you feel that way? It's great to see continued software development enabling a smoother public charging experience across the spectrum of EV brands. When it comes to charging, matching your dwell time with your charging needs is a great way to make the most out of your EV ownership. Slower charging is definitely part of the equation. This week, there is more news on level two public charging deployment. The City of Los Angeles Department of Transportation has partnered with Brooklyn-based curbside charging company It's Electric to deploy 90 new public Level 2 charging ports across city neighborhoods over the next 12 months. The initiative will convert former Blue LA car share infrastructure into 24-7 public charging stations, starting with an initial rollout of 15 ports in Koreatown by December. It's Electric's design is uncommon in the U.S. because they feature detachable cables which are provided free to registered users. The bring-your-own-cable method is more commonplace in Europe 
Europe, where it improves reliability by reducing theft and damage risk. The company has already expanded to several U.S. cities, including Boston, Detroit, San Francisco, Jersey City, Alameda, D.C., and Yonkers. The stations draw power from adjacent buildings, eliminating costly utility upgrades while sharing revenue with property owners. Interested property owners and drivers can join the waitlist on their site, and I'll include a link below in the description if you want to learn more. In other curbside charging news this week, New York utility company Con Edison, in partnership with the New York City Department of Transportation and Canadian charging operator Flow, released their four-year curbside charging pilot program report. The program launched in 2021 with 100 publicly accessible chargers installed across all five boroughs of New York City. The report reveals that the program has far outperformed initial projections. More than 7.25 gigawatt hours of energy has been delivered since the inception of the program, powering millions of zero emission miles. Site-wide utilization reached 72% in the fourth year, which is six times the original target of 12%. To note, the charging dispensers from Flow have a maximum charge rate of 7.2 kilowatts. The report shows that the most common complaints have been that there are not enough chargers, in part due to a lack of enforcement regarding unlawfully parked non-EVs blocking access to the charging equipment. The numbers show that ICE vehicles at least partially blocked EV spaces 30% of the time. Predictably, those numbers decreased as police issued fines for parking infractions. One glaring negative found in the pilot was maintenance costs for the charging equipment. Flow's maintenance costs reached over $1,000 per charger per quarter, whereas in the report, they claim the national average is $75 per charger per quarter. It looks like the majority of the maintenance was attributed to hardware damage, including cables and communication issues. Maybe they should compare notes with the team at It's Electric. The pilot program data shows that costs have to come down or else the rates have to go up in order to sustain financially viable curbside charging. I'll link the full report in the description below. You may have thought that the era of EV companies becoming publicly traded through SPACs was over, but it isn't. Einride, the Swedish electric and autonomous heavy-duty freight technology firm, announced that it has agreed to go public through a merger with blank check company Legato Merger Corp 3. The deal values Einride at a pre-money equity of $1.8 billion and is expected to provide up to $219 million in gross proceeds, with the company also seeking an additional $100 million in pipe financing. The transaction is expected to close in the first half of 2026, listing the combined entity on the New York Stock Exchange. Founded in 2016, Einride has built a growing business around its Saga Intelligent AI-powered freight platform, which is designed to optimize electric and autonomous trucking operations. The company reports $65 million in contracted annual recurring revenue, with $45 million already deployed and a fleet of nearly 200 heavy-duty EVs serving 26 customers. Einride already operates in seven countries across Europe, North America, and the Middle East, including commercial routes in Sweden, Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, UAE, and here in Tennessee and California. Their U.S. headquarters is based in Austin, Texas. The company claims to have demonstrated over 1,700 driverless hours in contracted customer operations, over 11 million electric miles driven, and more than 350,000 executed shipments. They say they were the first company globally to receive permits for cabless, heavy-duty autonomous vehicle operations on public roads, specifically in the United States in 2022 and have maintained zero traffic incidents across all operations. Several OEMs have sold vehicle platforms to Einride, including BYD, which sold 200 trucks to the company back in 2022. Their first autonomous EV pod in the U.S. was deployed just one year prior to GE Appliances. The move comes just weeks after Einride raised $100 million in private funding. Several high-profile trucking and EV companies that went public via SPACs, including Nikola, Lordstown Motors, and Proterra, later faced bankruptcy. Will Einride buck the trend?
On a quick note before we wrap up, there has been a confirmed starting price adjustment on the new TMB e-bike that was launched by Rivian-backed micromobility company also. A version will now start at $3,500, a $500 reduction from the previously announced entry price. I'll include a link to our detailed review of the TMB as well as our interview with the company president in the description below. These have been our top EV news stories for this week. We hope you'll consider subscribing and sharing this video online so we can continue producing this show among the other videos we create here. Thank you for watching, and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.